Hi, Phyllis here. We're getting ready to make wonton noodles because later on we're going to fix egg drop soup. And here's the recipe. Okay, now I'm going to show you that recipe again when we start frying them. So we're going to start off by measuring our flour. And again, I'm using white lily all-purpose flour. And we want it sifted. So it's one and one half cups. In your sifter. And one teaspoon of salt. Now, you need to always measure your salt not over what you're cooking, but to one side in case you get too much. All right, that's about one cup, one teaspoon of salt. Now I'm gonna sift the flour. And sifting the flour is gonna make the, the end result of the wonton noodles just, just a little lighter and crispier. So you want to always sift your flour. Now I'm going to use one large egg, and again I use Eglin Best. Crack your eggs on a flat surface so you don't get any, um, so that you don't get any um, eggshell in the egg. Now I'm going to use three tablespoons of water in my eggs or in my egg. And I'm just going to beat that. Incorporate the water and the egg together. Right. Dump the flour in a mixing bowl. Make a little trough and pour your egg and water mixture into the flour mixture. Now I'm going to mix that up. And again, this, this is uh, going to be fried wonton noodles. And this is the exact same way you would make regular wonton noodles. But instead of frying them, you would boil them. You'd fill them with some type of filling and boil them. So now we're going to have to use our hands on this. Mix it up really good. And then we're going to knead it after we get it all incorporated. Now if you need a little more water, which this does, I'm going to put just a teeny bit more water in there, about another tablespoon. Because flour, uh, all flour is different, and maybe it will soak up more water than not. So, it is going to be a pretty stiff batter. Just kind of get it off your hands. And work it up into a ball. Now the kneading is what makes it stretch because you're actually developing the gluten in the flour. So we'll get up as much of that flour as it will take in. And then just take a little bit of more of the egg mixture and see if I can get some more of that out. And put it in there. Okay, so this is really kneading. Anytime you're stretching the flour, that's, that's what kneading is all about. And you can do it down on a surface like that. And fold it over, smooth it out again. Bend it over. However you want to do it, it really doesn't matter. But you're going to need to do this for several minutes, really, to get it working. Now, after we have kneaded this, 
we're going to put it in a bowl and cover it up with a damp dish towel and let it sit there for about 30 minutes. Then we're going to come back and roll it out very, very thin and cut our noodles out. So again, I'm just kneading it to get it all mixed in together and to stretch out the gluten that's in the flour. Okay, that's probably about good enough. I'm going to keep it in a little bowl. And I'm going to just simply put it back in this little bowl, cover it up with a damp dish towel or paper towel if you want to use a paper towel. I'm going to just cover it up and we're going to let it sit there for 30 minutes. And so we'll be back in 30 minutes. Okay, we're back and it's been about 30 minutes now and we have allowed our dough to sit covered and it's much softer now. So we're going to spread it out a little bit and now we're getting ready to roll it out. So you're going to need a, a rolling pin and you're going to need cornstarch. Now we're going to just sprinkle a little cornstarch on our little palette here, spread it around. Now I want to go over the recipe again real quick with you. It's going to take one and a half cups of sifted white lily all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of salt, one large egg, and three, maybe four tablespoons of just tap water. And you'll also need cornstarch for rolling the dough out. All right, now I'm going to slip over here and cut the light on so you can see better. Okay, see how the dough will stretch now. So we're going to stretch it out a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Before we roll it out. See, when you're stretching, it kind of looks like a rubber ball because it'll give a lot. All right. I'm going to place it down in the cornstarch, and we're going to roll it out very, very fine, very, very thin. Now, this little plastic sheet is uh, the type of sheet that you use to roll out pie crust. You can get these in the kitchen section at Walmart. I think they come three in a pack. All right, so it's going to take some muscle here to really roll it out thin, because the thinner they are, the crispier the wonton, wonton noodles will be. And so it'll come right up off that, so you don't have to worry about it sticking. Again, it's going to take some muscle to roll this out. And you can also just pick it up and stretch it. That helps too. Let me see how much I can do that. Just keep stretching it and stretching it. You don't want to break it, but you want it thin. crispier the noodles will be. And that's what you're looking for because we're going to put them in some egg drop soup. And I'm going to show you how to make the egg drop soup as soon as we get through with the noodles. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut my burner on. Now in the skillet I've got about a half inch of canola oil. I'm going to go ahead and turn that skillet on medium high for right now because I want the temperature of the oil 350 degrees. So that should be heating up pretty quick. Now we're going to go back over here and keep rolling this out and stretching it. Because again, the thinner it is, the better the wonton noodles will be. Now if you were making wonton soup, this is the same recipe that you would use 
to make the wonton noodles. The only difference would be you would be cutting them out probably in a little circle and filling them with something, some little vegetables and a little bit of meat or chicken of some kind. Okay, see how that stretches? All right, now we're gonna do, we're gonna cut the noodles. Oops, see it tore a little bit, so you wanna try to, try to not tear it if you can. Once it starts tearing, you know you've got it real thin. Okay, I'll And I'm gonna start cutting these, and I want them about maybe an inch across and about two inches long. Now, all of the rounded edges you see here, I'm gonna use every bit of that because when you're eating them, it doesn't make any difference whether they're round on the end or whatever, just as long as they're thin. You don't have to worry about making them exactly the same size either. You can also stretch them out a little bit more as you're dropping them in the grease. Now I'm going to turn it around this way and cut, cut them like this. I'm about two inches. They don't have to be exact. Now we're just going to pick our sheet up and go right over to the stove with them. And probably the oil is not quite hot enough yet, but we'll check it. Now you'll need a pan with lots of paper towels in it because you're going to drain them, and a slotted spoon. I want to make sure my oil is at least 350 degrees. Now this is just a candy thermometer, but it can also be used for deep frying, and because the oil's not very thick, I'm going to just hold it in there and let the temperature get up. And once the temperature gets up to 350 degrees, I'm going to cut my burner down because I don't want it to get too hot. And again, on the noodles, I'm going to fry every single one of them because they are really that good. So we're still waiting for this oil to get hot. You don't need much oil at all. Now, Making these noodles is really a lot of trouble, so you can just stretch them out, and that's usually what I do. As I'm dropping them in the oil, I just stretch them a little more. Now they'll curl up a little bit once they're in the oil. So I'm going to stretch them, stretch them. So isn't that great, the way it'll stretch? What makes this happen is the gluten in the flour will make them stretch like that. Now you can uh, make these noodles ahead of time and, you know, obviously make more than this if you want a big batch. And you can just put them in a little freezer bag and put them right in the freezer. Take them out just before you're going to use them. Okay, my oil's at 250 now, so we still need it about 100 degrees hotter. These things uh, will cook very, very fast. So it's, this is not something that you can put on and walk away. You'll have to stay right there with it. And again, while I'm waiting for the oil, I'm just stretching these out. Because it's very hard to, to roll them out real super, super thin. But the thinner, the better. Okay, we're up to 300 degrees now, so we're still waiting on that oil. But again, these will cook very, very fast. Now, the reason I make my own wonton noodles is because I can't find a store where I can buy them the kind I like. Every once in a while, you go to a Chinese restaurant and they have those flat, longer noodles, and they are always so good. Now, see if one breaks, just put it in anyway. 
Okay, my oil's hot enough now. It's right at 350 degrees. Now I'm going to cut it down to medium because I don't want my oil to overheat. And I'm going to start frying these. Just drop them in like that. They'll puff way up. See how that one's puffed way up? And again, this is canola oil in the skillet. Now you might want to take a little fork and just flip some of them over. See how that's already getting a little brown? Now they've already got the salt in the batter or in the dough mixture, so you really don't need to salt them anymore. Now, so this one, this is the first one I put in. That's about the brownness that you're looking for right there. Now, I'm gonna well, I'm waiting for these. I'm going to stretch some more of these little noodles. Now, the, uh, sometimes when you buy wonton noodles, you'll notice a little, almost like a little dust on them. That's because of the cornstarch. Okay, now some of these are ready to take up now. I'm going to take these two up, and it's going to be really greasy. So you want to kind of flip them over on the paper towels. I'm going to flip these over to one more time and let them get done. Again, you don't need much oil at all in your skillet. Well, that one doesn't want to flip over, does it? So I guess it won't get flipped over there. All right, now they sort of look familiar now to you. If you've eaten in a really nice Chinese restaurant, this would be the kind of uh, noodles that you would have to go in your wonton soup or your uh, egg drop soup. All right, I'm going to take the rest of these up now. Just flip them over on the paper towels. Now this is kind of messy, but again, you can fry a whole bunch of these at one time and uh, put them right in the freezer. Okay, I'm going to put more noodles in now. Start layering them in. Again, I'm frying even the little pieces. See how they're puffed way up now? So it'll take about three times, maybe four, of frying them. They cook in probably, I don't know, a minute or so, most of the time. You don't want to put them on top of each other if you can help it, because they will stick together. Okay, we're going to finish cooking the wonton noodles, and uh, we'll be back in, in a minute, and we will start the egg drop soup. All right, welcome back. We've completed frying up our wonton noodles, and here they are. Now, these are the ingredients for the egg drop soup. We're going to use four cups of chicken stock. Now the way I made this chicken stock was it was from a rotisserie ch chicken that we got at Walmart and after we finished eating it I just took the bones and the skin and two sticks of celery, boiled them in a big pot for about two hours and then strained everything out and put it in the refrigerator. The next morning I scooped all the fat off of it. So this is four cups. All right. Now to the four cups of chicken stock, 
we're going to add two tablespoons of corn, corn starch into one cup of just tap water. And make sure it's not, you don't want hot water, it needs to be tap water. All right, we're just going to stir this around and make sure it's all dissolved. It'll be real cloudy looking. All right, it's all dissolved in that water. We're going to leave that sitting there a minute. Now to the four cups of chicken stock, we're going to add two tablespoons of teriyaki sauce. Now again, this is the egg drop soup, my American version. Now if you were using uh, chicken stock that you buy in the store in a can, it would probably take about three cans. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. You want to be careful you don't spill any of that in the pot. Right, it's two tablespoons. Two tablespoons of chopped chives. Now you can use uh, green top onions in this if you want to, and I have even actually shredded about a fourth of a small onion when I didn't have chives or green top onions. Put that in there, but either way, you want a little bit of onion flavor in there. Now this chicken stock is pretty well boiling. Now the egg mixture is two large eggs and you want to probably get them at room temperature and I put about a tablespoon of water in there and beat them up really really good. Now they're still a little little cool but you don't want them like refrigerator cold. So now I'm going to just stir this chicken stock with the chives in it and I'm going to add this cornstarch and water. And when I add it, I'm just going to keep stirring because the water's already boiling. So this cornstarch will thicken up pretty quick. Now, if, if it gets too thick, you can always add a little more water. I see there were no lumps in there. It was all stirred up and uh, dissolved. All right, I'm going to get a little more water in here in case I need it. because I don't want the, uh, the mixture here to get too thick. And I'm just going to keep stirring this until it comes to at least a simmer. Now if you don't stir it right here, that cornstarch will thicken up and it'll stick to the bottom of the pot. So you want to keep stirring it and it'll start looking a little clearer and it will just thicken up a little bit. Now, with the eggs, what you want to do is find some kind of cup or anything that's got a real fine little um, spout on it like that. A measuring cup will sort of work, but one, and this is a measuring cup, but it, you see that little, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, that little itty bitty um, spout on each side because what I'm going to end up doing is pouring this into this hot mixture as soon as the mixture thickens up just a little bit. Again, you want to keep stirring this. Now this is going to cook the chives a little bit. See how pretty they look? They're real, real green now. We grow chives out in the yard, but you know they die back in the winter time. So, but we have them usually from about April up until about really about the first of December. And I've just got one bunch of chives out there, but it just, you cut them back and it just keeps producing. Okay, I'm going to turn my burner up just a little bit to hurry this along. Again, the chicken stock was already boiling when I added the extra cup of water with the dissolved cornstarch in it. Now I'm going to let my cameraman go over and see if we can capture a picture of the recipes again. This is the egg drop soup recipe. Two tablespoons of corn starch dissolved in one cup of water, four cups of chicken stock, two tablespoons of teriyaki sauce, 
two tablespoons of cider vinegar, two tablespoons of snip chives or green onions, onion tops, two large eggs plus one tablespoon of water beaten together in cup with spout. And you just put that in a large saucepan, bring your uh, chicken stock to a boil, turn the heat down to a simmer then when you get ready to put your eggs in. And you'll know that when it gets clear. And you, you're going to add the eggs very slowly and stir very slowly. Now to make the homemade chicken stock, you use the bone, skin, and leftovers from uh, one rotisserie chicken, two stalks of celery, six cups of water. Just put those in a pot and boil them for about two hours. Then you're going to strain it, put it in the refrigerator overnight, scoop the fat off, and you'll have your, your probably five cups of chicken stock. Okay, now back over here with the chicken stock, it's boiling now. Now what I want to do is turn it way down because I don't want it boiling that much. But it's going to stop boiling as soon as I start putting the eggs in. Alright, now this is the very important part of making egg drop soup. You can't just dump the eggs in. So, and I want you to be able to really see this. So I'm going to, let's see. I can't pour with my left hand, so I'll have to do it with this one. Now watch the little stream. Just a little stream. And just gently stir. Gently stir. Because you don't want to, you want your eggs to kind of hang together. Just gently stir it. Gently stir it. Now those eggs are going to cook, of course, in the boiling water. See how they make long stringy things? Because you want it to look like egg drop soup, right? So now I'm going to gently stir it because I don't want to break up those strings. Now that egg is cooking right now. It's probably already done. We didn't need any more water. The thickness of it was just right. See, it's just a little thick, not much. Just barely bring that to a boil again. Just barely, barely, barely. Just want to just simmer it just a little bit. Now if you want to be really sure about everything, you can actually put one of these candy thermometers in it. And as long as it gets up to 160 degrees, the eggs are safe and it will be done. It's climbing right up there now. We'll just put this on the side here. Now this is just to be sure that the eggs you're eating in here are safe. So we turned our burner up just a little bit more. Okay, it's reached 160 degrees at this point. Of course, the eggs are certainly more than done at this point. I really don't want it to boil because if it starts boiling, it's going to break up those eggs. All right. Now we're going to dip it out into the bowls. All right, here we go. See how stringy the eggs are? Okay. Now this is a very frugal meal because the chicken stock was pretty much free. Remember, we would have just thrown away the skin and the bones of the chicken and any little bit leftover tidbits that were still on the bone. But instead, we've got yet another meal out of it. Now, of course, Asian cooking is very frugal, very. Now, here we go to our noodles. What we're going to do is take two or three noodles and just go ahead and put them in the soup. 
and they will um, soak up and get soft. And we're just going to put two or three on the side. All right, here's our lunch for today, along with, of course, great southern sweetened with lemon iced tea. All right, we will see y'all next time.